Last time we talked about gravitational potential energy, and in this video I want to talk to you about another kind of potential energy, spring potential energy. So if we uh, if we have a spring, then we know you know we know that if we have a spring, this is like a, a wall that the spring is attached to. Um, that spring can be compressed or stretched, and the force it takes, or the force that that spring exerts on us, I should say rather, is uh, minus k delta x. For the minus sign here is just saying that it opposes um, opposes the direction we push on it. So if I push on it to the left meaning that it becomes shorter, right? So delta x is some negative amount. Then the force of the spring on me is negative times a negative is a positive. The spring exerts a force to the right. So the spring pushes to the right. Okay, that's just a reminder of, of how, this, how this equation or how this direction works. So uh, if I push on this spring and make it shorter, uh, we can figure out how much work it takes to compress this spring. So if we think about splitting up this compression into a bunch of little pieces, um, if I, you know, I start with the spring and I push it a little bit, well, that uh, that first little bit of work isn't very big because the force that the spring is exerting is really small because delta x is really small, right? This is really close to its equilibrium length, so that first little bit of a push um, isn't <laughs> isn't very much work. Uh, as I push more and more, though, the compression gets bigger and bigger, which means the force gets bigger and bigger, which means for each little bit more that I push it in, it takes more and more work to do that. Uh, so if we, we could draw some graphs to, to convince you of why this is, but I think the, the, the easiest way to understand it is just to think about it in terms of an average force. So if I, if I start with this here at the equilibrium length and I compress it some distance, delta x, some of the time uh, my force is zero, some of the time my force is this maximum, most of the rest of the time my force is in between those two. And so we can kind of say, well, what if we use the average force to figure out what the work is, right? So our work for, for you know, our definition of work is our force times our distance and everything's happening just in one direction here. So we're, we're not gonna worry about cosine theta. Everything is happening in a, in a straight line. So if we use like the average force here, You know, is that is that something we can do? Well, the average force, as we compress this spring, uh, over here on one side is zero, right? Right when we start to compress the spring, it's zero. When we have fully compressed it a distance delta x, um, our force is k times this full delta x compression. So we're compressing it from, sorry, from this equilibrium length to to here, this amount delta x. So here the force is zero, here the force is k times delta x, and so the average force is just those divided by two, which is one half k times delta x. D, the distance we're pushing, we already know, is this delta x. So the equation we get then for the work to compress the spring is one half, zero is zero, uh, one half times k delta x times delta x again. So one half k delta x squared is the work that I put into the spring to compress it. And in fact, this is, you know, because, because springs are, spring forces are a conservative force for reasons we don't need to worry about right now. Uh, because they are a conservative force, the work that we put into that is stored in the spring as potential energy. So this is also the expression for the potential energy stored in a spring. So PE of the spring is equal to one half K delta X squared. 
Now this is the work that we did on the spring. The work done by the spring is the opposite of this. So WS, this is the work by the spring, not the work by me, but the work by the spring is equal to minus PE of the spring. And this is for the same reason that we saw that uh, the work done by gravity was equal to minus the potential energy um, of, of gravity. And now I'm going to change these P's to U's because I forgot to do that. U is what we use for potential energy. So the potential energy U of the spring is equal to 1 FK delta X squared. The work of the spring is equal to minus uh, the potential energy of the spring. All right, great. So, um, <laughs> so we could also have gotten this answer using um, using calculus, but this uh, I think this this way works also. It turns out that the answer we get is exactly the same if we do it the like fully mathematical correct way, or just the let's guess what happens if we if we use the average force. Okay, one um, one thing you might run into here is with this delta x. So in this in this equation, delta x is not necessarily x final minus x initial um, because delta x is meaning something different here. Delta x is how 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 far the spring is from equilibrium. From its equilibrium length. In other words, um, if I start out with a spring that, let's say my spring is has an equilibrium length of 20 centimeters, and in a problem, in a problem, I start with it compressed to 10 centimeters, and I finish the problem with the spring expanded, but only to 15 centimeters, oh, let's say 16, 16 centimeters. So for delta x, we don't use initial and final for these. In this case, for each of these, we have an initial and a, a excuse me, for, for, the, for the start condition, we have a delta x associated with this initial condition. We also have a delta x associated with this final condition. So in other words, here, for the start, uh, delta x is 20 minus 10, the difference between these, which is 10 centimeters. And for the finish, delta x is how far is this from equilibrium? That is four centimeters. So we actually have like a delta x initial and delta x final that go into this equation because we can have a potential energy that's different at the beginning and at the end. So this is kind of an odd use of, of delta x. This is not the same as in kinematics, and this is something that trips people up, so I figured I would, I would address that now. All right. Let's erase some of this. So we have the uh, potential energy stored in a spring. We have the work done by the spring. Why, why is this useful? Or how does this fit into what we have been doing? Well, if we know, if, if we have a spring that does work on an object to speed it up or to slow it down, um, and we know, you know, we know what's going on with this work, we can use the work energy theorem In other words, remember, our work energy theorem is the network is the change in the kinetic energy. And now this network might have a lot of pieces in it, uh, gravity, us pushing on it, friction. Maybe there's also a spring. And if we know something about how the spring changes its compression, we know how the potential energy changes. And if we know how the potential energy changes, we can use the work in, in that equation. All right. Oh, I. There's supposed to be a delta here. This is the the minus the change in the potential energy. Hopefully, I'll remember to <laughs> address that. All right. Great. So let's do a uh, 
a really, really quick example of this. So let's say we have a, uh, a spring that starts out compressed and it's compressed and uh, up, uh, up against a ball, right? So we start spring compressed, here's the ball. And so this is our like initial state. Our final state has the spring expanded and the ball now moving with some velocity, right? So if the spring is at its, we're not gonna use any numbers, we're just gonna keep this example conceptual. Uh, here, we have some potential energy stored in the spring. US is greater than zero. Here, our spring is, if it's, if it's done pushing, it's at its equilibrium length. So there is no um, energy stored in the spring anymore. If it's at its equilibrium length, delta X equals zero. And so US equals zero. Here, the ball's kinetic energy is equal to zero. And here the ball is moving and it has some kinetic energy. So if we wanna know how the kinetic energy of the ball changes, we just need to know the net work done on it. And if that work is done by the spring, that energy is just the change in potential energy. So here, the potential energy goes from some energy, you know, from five joules to zero joules, uh, which means that the delta U is minus five joules. So the work done by the spring on the ball is plus five joules, which means the kinetic energy is plus five joules in the end. We'll do some more examples with numbers, but just um, conceptually, this is gonna let us figure out how much energy springs put into things, or in some cases, how much energy springs uh, take out of things.